This is Hard Rocker Highlights from Denham Field at O'Hara Stadium with head coach Dan Kratzer. This is Tom Rudabush. And coach, you went down to Fort Lewis, uh, Colorado uh, at uh, Durango and uh, played the uh, Skyhawks last week. It was a very interesting game. But I want to ask you first, of all your years of coaching, have you ever gone on a longer road trip? Not by bus, <laughs> Tom. Uh, I have flown a couple places uh, further, but uh, you know that was the, that was the most important factor. Was we were just in hopes that we could find the school, and and we found it. <laughs> you know the game was 13 to 13 with just over two minutes to play in the third quarter, and that fourth quarter was just a wild quarter. We had a couple of bad bounces, had a couple of breakdowns, but all. In I thought proved that we could compete with Fort Lewis. Well, I, I thought so too, Tom. You know, it just it kind of came down to, you know, we were really in control of the momentum in that third quarter and uh, tied the game back up and, you know, really felt good about things. And then, of course, when we got the block punt and they score one play later and then 10 seconds later they score again, uh, it broke our back. You know, those two special teams blunders and, you know, it's it's something that you just have to continue to press and work on and get better at, and put the right people in the right place, and uh, not have those things happen. Because you know, you take those two plays out of the ball game, and you know, we're uh, we're right in it. And it was uh, a competitive game. Uh, I thought our kids responded well for the you know, the travel, and there weren't there weren't any excuses. And that that's what you want to see from a football team. You want them to go out there and play and play hard and. And uh, you know, at the elevation and all the kind, of, I, you know, I noticed the elevation jogging from the locker room to the field. You know, about uh, about wore me out. So, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> there's a little difference in age between myself and the players, and they respond responded very well. You know, Pat Blumen played quarterback for you again, a true freshman, and he was thrust into a starting role here a couple of days before the game. I thought he performed well, and I thought you got a couple of good receivers. Uh, Marshall Davis and, and Ed Wallachuk both had fine games. Well, they did, both of them. And, you know, Pat was really uh, put on the spot and, and he responded. You know, he did some things really well. And I don't think I've had a quarterback take as many hits and uh, have as many personal fouls against, you know, on them as Pat did. You know, we had roughing the passer four times. And, you know, I, I, it, that was, that's, that's tough on a quarterback. And, uh, so, uh, but you know, he just kept bouncing back up and making plays and, and doing what he had to do to lead that football team. And uh, uh, he was definitely sore uh, Monday and Tuesday of this week. <laughs> you know, the uh, offense, I thought, played very well. And you certainly used that Wildcat. You pulled it out again for the second week, used it very effectively with Dustin Mentally, who on the one scoring drive, not only threw the big pass, but ran it in for the touchdown. So you've used the Wildcat effectively. Well, we have, and you know, we had to, we had to help the offense a little bit from a personnel standpoint, you know, when you're, when you're playing freshman quarterbacks. And uh, so <clears throat> it's been such a part of our game uh, the last two weeks, it's gonna become a bigger part of our game during the rest of the season. We, uh, you know, we like to think out of the box a little bit and, and do some things and, uh, so you know, hopefully you'll you'll see some more production out of that formation and and uh, personnel adjustments uh, throughout the rest of the season. Now you've had uh, two different quarterbacks for the first two games. You're going to have a third different quarterback now for your third game. That's very likely to happen. <laughs> so um, the only the only foreseen thing that I that probably won't happen is uh, having a fourth come back because. Uh, uh, Ryan McCann has a torn lap muscle, and so he's going to be isolated and uh, you know try to get that thing healed up uh, for next season. But uh, Nick Russell is uh, is back, and and uh, you know Nick can do things with the football uh, that the other two guys can't, uh, and that's the accuracy downfield and, and the accuracy with the quick game. So you know we have another dimension for people to contend with now, and. Uh, Nick's had, you know, a couple of good weeks of practice, and he's been working hard. And, you know, we just we just hope that uh, circumstances uh, continue to uh, get better, and, and people learn from from you know what has happened in the past, and we put the past behind us, and and become better leaders on and off the field, and 
and, and Nick Shoney can do that. You play at Colorado Mines uh, this week, and they just might be the best team you play all year. I think they will be. Um, they're ranked nationally. I'm not sure where they're ranked, but I know they're ranked nationally right now. <clears throat> they opened up with a shutout against William Jewell, which is a new Division II school uh, from Liberty, Missouri. But, um, you know, they've got their quarterback back. Uh, they they have missed, uh, well, they don't miss their defensive linemen, but uh, they have a couple of good replacements. But, you know, they had a couple of players uh, on that team last year, an All-American, and uh, that have both signed contracts in the NFL. So uh, we're glad to see them gone. And, of course, they're... Uh, uh, their All-American safety is is gone, but they've got some pretty fine replacements behind them. So, you know, uh, they don't have a lot of weaknesses, and their kicking game's really good. Uh, it'll it'll be a battle for us. You know, the transition to Devil Division Two is going to be a, a, a process that requires patience. And if you look at the schools, Dan, that are going in that D2 move. University of Sioux Falls, flattened at home by Washburn, their first home loss in eight years. So, uh, Minot State losing, Black Hill State losing. It is a transition, and it isn't like the old NAIA. We are being called upon to really step up. Well, we are, and it's a challenge for all the players. And, you know, what we try to do is we try to, to narrow it down to one-on-one -on -one situations, you know. We tell the guys, hey, look at your scouting report here. Now, you know, here's the game plan. Look at your scouting report and accept the challenge of who you're playing against. You know, if that, if that guy across from you, if you're, a, if you're the center and uh, their nose tackle is 6'2", 270 pounds, and, and you know what he's majoring in, you know a little bit about him, take that challenge. And, what, you know, we we're tell our kids and we're constantly telling them, don't accept being good. You have to, if you accept being good, you'll never be the best. If you accept being good, you'll never be great. So we don't want to be good anymore. We want to, we want to step beyond that. And, and they have to have that individual challenge that brings the team up uh, one player at a time. And we can do that. The Hard Rockers at Colorado Mines in Golden, Colorado. That's just the western uh, suburb of Denver. And we'll have coverage on the Hills 97.5 beginning at 1140 Saturday morning. Remember, it's a noon kickoff in the Denver area. For Coach Dan Kratzer, this is Tom Rudebusch for Hard Rocker Highlights.